there'd be a lot of poop in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing a six foot alligator go swinging through the air and slam into a tree. These guys are the scientists of the supernatural, lecturers leaving lessons for inquiring laymen. They are applying the scientific method to a world that baffles science. They are the cryptids of the corn. But who else has big black wings and red eyes? Um, Batman. Oh, Mothman. Oh yeah, Mothman. A great white shark was stolen. Oh, someone stole a shark? I got stuff for you you don't even know about. She's a witch, she turned me into a newt. Who knows? Anything could be possible. Anything could be possible. It's really big mm -hmm. abduction vibes. Holy moly. It sounds like you were abducted. Man, it just stood up. I mean, it just like kept going and going. And she goes, what the f Hello, hello, and welcome back to Cryptids of the Corn podcast. I am the great and powerful mystery. And I am Jay, the ultimate clone number 31. <laughs> and together, we're going to bring you a fantastic, spooky episode. One of the topics that probably freaks me out more than any other topic we do. Ooh. Did you forget what the topic is? No, I did, but I can't believe this is the number one on your list. Well, not... Not the part of this, but the the phenomena okay. as a whole. Okay, okay. Because I can make shadow people and demons go away. I can shoot a Bigfoot if I had to. This is the one that you lose a lot of control with. Mm, okay. Uh, but before we get into the topic, we have our front of house stuff like always. YouTube is ever growing. Please go subscribe to our YouTube. It's under the same name, Critters of the Corn. Like, uh, share, subscribe, YouTube. All that stuff. If you're noticing any differences in audio at all, we greatly upgraded the studio again with the Roadcaster Pro 2. Uh, so, yeah, if you yeah. notice anything, though, that's wrong, yeah. like, please let us know. Uh, like, if it's quieter than normal or whatever, or it's louder than normal, whatever. If there's any issues, let us know. Uh, we are pre record, like, we pre record a week, so it'll take, you know, take some time for any changes to actually happen. Uh, but let us know. This is our first official recording with it. Right. Give us some feedback. Um, Speaking of the YouTube, though, we are about to embark on the next big segment of Cryptos of the Corn, starting a a documentary series. It's a uh, funumentaries. Funumentaries. Uh, funumentaries. Uh, no, they're they're launch. It's called Lawn Chair Documentaries. The Kickstarter starts May fourth, so that's this week. Uh, you can find the link to pre sign up if you would like to donate uh, in the below. If not, still pre-sign up. Even if you cannot donate, that's fine. But what that helps is it shows that there's a lot of interest and other people will back it then. Yeah, the algorithms will like boost it, it and yeah. share it around more. Uh, but I think we have it for 1500 bucks is kind of the goal, and that's pretty much just for the equipment. Right, some new camera gear, some new microphones. And then whatever it stops to, I, me and Jay will you know, probably pick up the slack and get it the rest of the way. Right, yep. But if you are able to, we'd greatly appreciate you. D uh, donating if you can't you can't we completely understand mm -hmm. uh but yeah so that's under the air uh launcher documentaries is going to be great you're going to see some ufo stuff bigfoot stuff and ghost stuff is uh, what our first year's planned all the fun stuff we like to cover yeah and it's going to be us uh we already got our first backer which we're going to do a whole episode on uh probably in a week uh, later in this week uh but we have a company donating high dollar lawn chairs which yeah. is crazy Luxury lawn chairs. Luxury. Uh, it's almost just as expensive as the camera. Yeah, probably. For one chair. That, yeah, probably. It's only 100 bucks off. Man, that's nuts. I know, but I'm so excited. Uh, we have the Ohio Bigfoot this weekend. Ohio Bigfoot Conference, the OBC. Oh, that's right. OBC, that's baby. Kind of came up so fast. I know. It's because the way we spaced out stuff, I think, this year was a lot better. Yeah, I think so, To where so we too. were only ever two or three week, weeks away from a conference. So it's not like it's back-to-back. -back, right. But it's enough time to work. Okay, we come home, reset, order more T-shirts, and then it's ready to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. OBC is a fun weekend. Absolutely. Uh, and it's my one of my favorite conferences because I don't have to do anything. Last season, it was my favorite one of the whole whole year. I know, and CounterQuest will probably be my favorite one this year. 
Right, I know. But OBC is like a drunk weekend for us. <laughs> yeah, and it's and it's fun closer. with the kids and stuff like that. Like a lot of listeners bring their kids, and like last year we did the Bigfoot howling contest for kids. Oh yeah, it's right outside. Yeah, and it was so much fun. Like I, it's me and my wife are four H advisors, so we love doing stuff with kids like that. You know, it's just yeah. fun to get the younger generation a part of this stuff. Right. Because I was like, I was talking to all these kids outside. I'm like, do any of you want to do your best Bigfoot calls? And they're like, no. <laughs> no, none of them want to like, do. What if you get a prize? Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They're all switched. Like, yes, we'll all scream into the woods. Yeah. And we gave them all a prize. All the kids. We're <laughs> gonna do something like that. We're hiding the Bigfoots again. Uh, I don't know. Hit last year, yeah. I think. Yeah. So it's it's fun. We're doing. We're going a day early this time to spend time on Thursday with the Patreon members. Uh, so look, be if you're a Patreon member, be watching on the Patreon page this week uh, right. for how that's going to be. Are we doing a, that? Is a hike for Patreon members? Yes. Nice. So that's uh, with John Hickenbottom. Yeah, the doing... Salamander hike. Yeah, it's going to be sweet. I'm John's excited a good for friend that. of ours. Yeah, that best hi- mustache in Ohio. What is he? That Ohio State. Uh, he's a natural- he's a he's a Ohio State naturalist. Uh, he's a South Park. Is this, not South Park. Salt Fork <laughs> naturalist. I was watching South Park earlier today. <laughs> Uh, he's a salt fork naturalist. He's an amazing man, and he's uh, um, one of one of the men after my kind of heart. You know, reptiles and amphibians is one of yeah. his big passions. So you and him are leading the salamander hike. He's leading the salamander hike. Oh, I know. I, but. I not as good with some of the Ohio species because a lot of them have red and brown backs. Oh, okay. As adults, I am colorblind with red being the worst color. Gotcha. So like red back salamanders are a hard one for me, and that's one of the more common ones. Slimy salamanders, so I expect to see redback salamanders, slimy salamanders, maybe Jefferson's in the area. And that's a part of Ohio I'd never really do a lot of salamander stuff in. So if you're interested in salamanders and you're at, in, you know, in the area of Ohio Bigfoot Conference, join our Patreon and come join us on the salamander hunt. Yeah, it's going to be hunt. a lot of fun. A salamander walk. We call them salamander hunts. But, there we go. You know, you just, we just take a picture and put back. Right. Uh, but it's always a ball. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Me and Emily. You know, Northwest Ohio is a lot easier because it's like we have like six species. Yeah. So you're like, it's either, is it a blue and black one? Is it the purple one? Is it the round one? Nah, you know, it's we're like, getting red and brown backs yeah. next week. Well, there's long toes, long tails, uh, slender, slimies, uh, yellow spots, gamut. marbles, uh, maybe even a green if we're lucky. That would be crazy. I don't think they've ever been found in Salt Fork, but I do believe they have the habitat for them. Ooh, stay tuned. But if you're coming to a conference, let us know. Uh, we're trying to get better with learning faces before. Uh, Nicole is the one I, I pick on because I picked her out. I was walking around at Encounter Quest. And I'm like, Nicole? She's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and she just came to our live show. Which this, was a success. This live show was great. I'm telling you guys, uh, we're going to do so many more. It was very fun. It was addictive. Was uh, it? To me, it was because yeah. it was just fun. To, you know, everybody's there with kind of the same mindset and stuff like that. And they, it was just fun. To, like, my favorite part is always the questions at the end. Yep. You know, because I, people ask questions that, you know, I never think of mm-hmm. uh, to answer at least. You know, it's fun to talk about. Like, it was just a ball. I enjoyed it too. And we get to show video stuff that we don't get to do with the podcast. Right. You know, and that's always kind of fun because I was just like, as a, I was more like a kid when that came. Like, what do you guys think of this video? Right, exactly. Like, I know what I think of this video, but it's you like know. you know, you're sitting late at night and you see something pop up on your Facebook and you just want to share it with somebody else and talk to them about it. But normally, it's all online. This time, it was in person. Well, the Instagram uh, people send me tons and tons of videos for the Instagram. Yeah, and I save them all, uh, and just you know, it's hard to do stuff with them for the podcast. But you know, that was a great thing for this one. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great it was a great time. So be on the lookout for live shows. The people that came, we so much appreciate you. Yep. Thank you. And Mark and Jen, thank you for letting us stay at your house. And Jen, thank you for cooking us breakfast. Yep. Thank you uh, so much. It was so much easier being extremely hungover and somebody wakes up it's like, here's some bacon and eggs. You're right, and like, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're an angel. I agree. I drank so much whiskey. You as you did. And Christina is my drinking buddy. And she came down and that's a problem. <laughs> oh, Christina is an enabler. Uh, mm, I agree. I agree. You heard it here first, Christina. You're an enabler. Yes. But we and Joel, Joel was there too. It was so much fun. Yeah, it was a great Thank weekend. Thank you guys for coming. Yep. Uh, now, before we get into it, I know we're long intro, but there's a lot of stuff to catch up on. Right, yeah. Uh, 
reviews. We got three new reviews. Ooh, I like the new reviews. Uh, once again, please, if you leave us a five star review on uh, pretty much as Apple Podcasts is the one we can read, but please on any platform you're listening, leave a five star review. It greatly helps us out. Uh, so is just sharing the show. That's the best two ways to help out the show. Yep. But here's our new reviews. Uh, this one's titled "Trust Me, I'm a Professional." Ooh. Love the podcast and the chemistry between y'all is great. Nothing forced and learn something every show. That's true. I couldn't remember if I read this one last episode or not. I think I skipped it, but I don't remember hearing this one. But, but thank you. Yeah, thank you. And it's from Setheris. Setheris. Thank and you. And I'm going to spell the name just to make sure because I've done this. Uh, what did I say last time or a couple of times ago? Oh gosh, I can hardly remember. It was luminous, but I. What did I say? Luscious or lu- oh like, yeah, luscious. It was luscious something. Yeah. Uh, it's S H or S E T H E R U S. That's Seth Rose. Seth Rose. Some, yeah. Okay. It's good enough for me. This one's from Queen B. Ooh. And the title's Fun Crew. I love this podcast. Justin and Jay are really good at their jobs at being informative and being fun with each other in the cryptid and cryptid sections. These guys are very interesting to us too and make listening to the show very easy. Oh, that's really nice. Mm-hmm. Hey, it just comes natural. Mm-hmm. This one's from Flyover States. 523. Ooh. Hyena episode is a, is magnificent. The Hyena episode season three, episode 26, is a masterpiece. Completely turns the Dogman community on its head and has some very interesting thoughts regarding Sasquatch. It should be a book. You owe it to yourself to listen immediately. Mm. Thank you, Flyover States. Yeah, thank you, Flyover. I have a hunch who that might be. Who do you think it is? Well, I, I don't know. What, I don't want to name names if I'm wrong. No, go ahead. I think it might be Jeremiah. Oh, from the Bigfoot Society? Yeah. I think it is, too. If not, it's somebody that, uh, that had a very similar thing to say, because he said something very nicely similar on the on social media. Yeah. So thank you, Jeremiah, from the Bigfoot Society. Yes. There's a free is, ad for you. If that is you, thank you. Yeah. If not, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, now new Patreon members. Oh. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Christy R. Thank you, Christy. Uh, this was funny because I work with a Christy R. Yeah. And she joined. I Well, at least I get the email notification when I was talking to the Christy at my work. Oh, that's weird. And I'm like, did you sign up for our Patreon? She's like, what? No. <laughs> and she, she didn't really know what it was. And I was like, okay, well, it's just weird because here's the email. It says Christy R signed up. But no, Christy's 11-year-old son loves the show. Oh, nice. So thank you both. Uh, yeah. We greatly appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining in. Next one's Gary. Gary. Gary just came up. Uh, Gary, you'll be hearing and seeing more of yes. in one of the future documentaries. Yes, I think so, too. So thank you, Gary, so much. It was so fun hanging out with you. Right. Wish we had more time together. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, but Gary came on a tour of Hardin County. Got to see where my Bigfoot and Shadow Person encounters happened. Yep. Uh, and once again, if you guys are in the area, we'll, you know, we'd love to hang out. Let us know. We're pretty approachable as long as you're not, like, immediately creepy. <laughs> Yeah, as, as long as... you got to hide it for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next one's Nicole. Nicole! Hey, Thank Nicole. you, Nicole. We would greatly appreciate you. And she's we've seen her in Encounter Quest. She came to our live show. North Carolina, she drove up for the live show. Not just for the live show, but... But she did. Th- it was she amazing. She did show up, yeah. Uh, I so know. thank you, Nicole. Yes, thank you. Your dedication is much appreciated. And then uh, Amy... Hello, Amy. Hello, Amy. Amy joined this morning as of recording this, so I haven't had a chance to oh, reach really? out to her. Okay. I'm assuming it's a lady, but, you know, names, like, I, you know, you huh. never know. So we don't know Amy. For, we meet Amy, do As we? far as I know, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I haven't got the chance to reach out to her. Gotcha. Uh, but literally, I got the notification sitting down for this. Well, welcome, Amy. Thank you, guys. Uh, and then I believe they all are on the, f- the $5 tier, but we have a, a 3 a 5 and a $10 tier. Uh, July, I think, is the next Patreon give like the Patreon care packages. We do gotcha. it two times a year. I think it's going to be July. The ten dollar tier it normally gets like a T shirt and something, and then the five dollar tier gets like uh, we did. What did we do last time? Mini Bigfoots and stuff like that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the little uh, figurines. Yeah, the little figurines and stuff like that. So they'll be getting something special here soon. Yeah. So welcome, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you, and we appreciate having you. Mm-hmm. You ready for the topic? I am ready. I know that was a long intro. So thank you guys for sticking around with us. Owls in the UFO phenomena. Owls? Yeah. Okay. So we've heard this quite a few times. Owls. I don't like owls. Why not? At least as in, I think they're amazing animals with all kinds of adaptations to make them very successful predators. 
I don't like being around owls. Owls bother me deeply. Why? I'll tell you the story here in a second. Uh-oh. I have an owl story. You got attacked by an owl? Ish. Okay. I was... Anyways. And then what I was talking about earlier, though, is the UFOs, like alien abductions and stuff like that. The thing I'm probably scared of the most. Oh, gotcha. Because yeah. you could do nothing about it. As right. in, you know, without any training and stuff like that. Right. And you need- Later this week, you'll hear more about that. Oh, that's right. It comes out this Wednesday. I was just going to mention his name. Don't. But you'll we'll know s- more later. Yeah, stay tuned. Uh, but no, this is this is really freaky. So I have a Nick Redfern article we're going to read first. Uh, I may skip around it in a little bit. It's quite a chunky article, but everybody doesn't know who Nick Redfern's been in this field forever with the paranormal. Okay. Uh, UFO and cryptozoology. He did a pretty good episode or a pretty good um, article about just kind of introducing you to the idea that I have a whole bunch of little short stories of people seeing owls and having some troubles. And then I have some things that why this may be connected. Interesting. Yeah, I really wasn't sure how I wanted to do this episode because there's tons of like one off encounters that are huge that like, uh, oh, I'll say it here in a minute, but the like the. The movie producer that had Grace coming to his house, uh-huh. and uh, oh, what is that movie that everybody freaked out? Like they ran out of the theater. Close Encounters. Close Encounters. The third kind or something like that. I uh, I think so. With Whitley Strieber. Whitley Strieber. Mm, you know, Strieber. I, I don't know for sure. That's that's one of those movies in like the era I watched and liked movies. I should know this, but that one. I never really watched. There's probably a reason you have, because you have a precognition a bit like does not watch it for some reason. I, like uh, you were abducted or something like that. They don't want me to watch it. No, like your no, like your psyche doesn't want you to watch it. Mm. Oh, so it's just me on the inside. Like because we're gonna talk about owls obviously a lot, but there's a reason like your brain it may be doing this on its own to not let your brain break. Hmm. It wasn't the movie I was thinking of. What is it? Oh, I'm just saying. I'm looked up the close encounters at third kind. Doesn't have the name you just said. Before we get into this, what is your immediate opinion on like your, your first thought on owls with UFOs? Um, well, I never really had a connection or knew there was much of a connection before we got into all this stuff. But I see where it's being drawn where you got the big black eyes, you know, it looks like a little gray alien head. It just does. So I can see where they can and I know, like, people who have been abducted, you know, supposedly, um, they have that experience of, you know, getting these images, you know, projected into their, sub- I almost want to say subconscious, so they think of that's what they were, that's what they were saw, that's what they associate these things with, and owls is one of these, it's like the the gray alien or whatever will put on the mask of the owl, so you, it's a natural creature, so you're not as freaked out as seeing an actual gray alien. Now, as we were foreshadowing to this coming, this upcoming Wednesday, we had a discussion. My whole perspective on that has changed a little bit. See, I don't think, sorry, not to cut you off. Yeah. But with, after we talked, it was, it's Daryl Sims is coming out Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, I ruined the whole surprise. (laughs) We just built it up, built it up. And then just, uh, after talking to him and he's a man, I believe like fully believe he's been in this field forever. The research and the encounter. Anyways, I think my opinions were reinforced. Yeah, yours for sure. Uh huh. Because you've said this before, how they yes. project an image, you know, onto your, I don't know, mind or your thoughts. Like yeah, and then we're gonna talk about MK Ultra did that. Like that was a big one of the one of the big subsections of MK Ultra mm-hmm. is what's called a screen memory. Yeah, and we're that's we're gonna talk about that later. So I and that's where like humans can do that to other humans. Oh, really? Yes. Hmm. That's what they found out during MK Ultra. Yes. Dang. Okay. Uh, and, but it don't. Why they kind of quote unquote moved away from it is because the target is pretty much unusable after though. Okay. It fries you. Like it fries your brain doing it. Oh. Uh, okay. You can do it. It fries but, the user's brain. No, it fries the person you're doing it to. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so it kind of was pointless for MK Ultra's thing because at that point they're pretty much vegetables. Uh, so you could just oh, kill them instead. So it's that bad. Yeah. Dang. Okay. So it'd be easier just to shoot them than you know do all this extra work. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, but what you could do it is the point of that. Is it like yes? It was right. So if you have more advanced technologies or you kept working on the technology, you may get to a point where the test subject can be caught and released. 
without anything. Without their brain being fried. Yeah. Hmm. The flying saucer phenomenon exploded in spectacular style in the summer of 1947 when a pilot named Kenneth Arnold encountered a number of strange delta-shaped objects flying in formation over the Cascade Mountains in Washington State. In mere hours, UFO hysteria had begun. It reached the height level just one month later in still unresol- with the still unresolved incident at Roswell, New Mexico. It was not until 1961, however, did the concept of alien abductions catch on with the UFO phenomena. In September of that month, or of that, uh, the September of that month, yeah, that's how it's written, uh, Betty and Barney Hill, who lived in New Hampshire, encountered something very strange and dark on a quiet stretch of road. It is their experience that saw the Hills taken aboard a UFO and treated like defective lab rats by emotionless humanoid entities that seemed to have a special interest in human reproduction. It wasn't long at all before the significant interest, or sorry, it wasn't long at all until the U.S. Air Force and UFO communities and media became looking for the truth in this affair. Such was the fascination of the story of writer John Fuller, a commissioned, uh, who commissioned a book to write on the incident. There was a brief summary above, published in 1966, titled, the, in, uh, the Interrupted Journal. Uh, since a fateful night in 1961, literally thousands of people have come forward with their near-identical reports, and how many of them exist buried by other witnesses. While the alien abduction phenomenon is uh, basically layers and layers and layers of mystery, it's just, it's just weird. Ain't it? The alien abduction bothers me deeply. Even after talking after talk to Daryl, it bothers me more. Yeah. Mom. Oh, yeah. Because you know it's happening, and there you know while it's happening, there's not much you can really do about it. So this is Nick Redford saying this. Alien abduction might not be what it seems to be. In far more than a few cases of alien abduction, witness or victims, take your pick, report something very strange, but which can be found across all over the planet. Whether lying in their beds or driving along a shadowy road in the woods, they have seen what they often describe as a giant-sized owl standing at the side of the road, staring at them. Then, or there then, follows a typical weird and mysterious event, one in which the witness suddenly finds themselves aboard a UFO, the subject of the kind of intrusive procedures reported by Betty and Barney Hill. Uh, so this is me talking now. To that note, uh, if you have little ones in the car, this is time just... Uh, you know, be wary. It was specifically for Barney's side of it. A horrific event. Uh, I mean, it was it was beyond what I would call rape. Yeah. Uh, the stuff they did to him. I mean, I I fully believe that's what he died from. He died from a heart attack, or and he had brain. I believe he had brain aneurysms too. Hmm. Uh, but that was due to the stress levels in his life. Yeah. Like literally. He was already a very, and we've talked about it. We've you know, we've done, you know, we talked about Betty and Barney Hill in one of our, was it? I think our first, our second organic UFO episode. Yeah, you know, was, we covered it a little bit. Yeah, I think so. It was the second one. Yeah, I think. You're and right. it, but the stress level he had in his life for the kind of life he was living then after this event just pushed him over the edge. Right. Yeah, I think any anyone that was in his shoes would say, would have the same reaction. Yeah. Just about. Mm-hmm. So back to the article. On other occasions, however, the witnesses have vague memories of what happened to them. Uh, they have no vague memories of what happened to them. Besides, an eerie image in his or her mind of an owl with deeply penetrating eyes staring at them. Mm. For UFOologists, the most obvious explanation is the owl is a screen memory created by aliens to seek to obscure and misremember what really happened to the abductees. A screen memory is one of a non-threatening nature that mind and subconscious creates to mask and bury a frightening, stressful event. This does naturally occur in the human mind. This also can, this is me talking, this also can be man-made, like we talked about with MK Ultra. Your brain can mm-hmm. do this, though. Have you ever misremembered uh, an event? I'm sure. Like, specifically, I like, uh, so, like, bad events, specifically, your brain will start chewing on them to make them, to not lose the information it gained from the bad event. But to make it like, uh, not as once again, this may be a little bit rougher episode. Uh, so like a lot of rape victims, 
will have this happen to them where their brain can't handle it. Their subconscious can't handle the trauma. Yeah. So it dolls down the events or like it just, it'll start changing the memories and it'll try to, it'll try to save as much of itself as it can. Yeah. Like it knows it happened, but yeah, it's, it's weird. It's weird. And then like, that's one of the, that's one of the worst things I could think to happen to another person besides actually being killed. But you don't have to worry about memories after that. Right, exactly. Uh, so it's it's just your brain will do this is what I'm trying to get at. So it's not like it's just an unheard of thing. Mm-hmm. Your brain can create screen memories all on its own. Now back to it. Whitley Strieber is an author of what is probably the most widely recognizable book about alien abduction phenomena, the bestseller Communion. That's the movie. That's the movie. Okay. Which was published in 1987. The cover, which displays a nearly hypnotic image of an alien entity. It may not be a coincidence that immediately after the first abduction experience, the striper recalled on December 26, 1985, his mind was filled with owl-based imagery. Striper's sister had her own experience with an anomalous owl in the early 1960s. Striper said in his book, Commune, that they drove between Texas towns of comfort in Kernanville. Comfort in Kernanville? Yeah. Okay. Never leave comfort. Is You'll that a joke? Uncomfortable. Oh. Hey, Eric. A little nod. Doing? Yeah. <laughs> a little nod to Eric. Uh, and <laughs> sorry. After the witching hour had struck, she was terrified to see huge lights sail down across the road ahead of her. After a few minutes later, an owl flew into the front of their car. I have to wonder if it's not a screen memory, but my sister has no sense of it. This is all blur, or this all brings me to something else. A creature that's become a staple part of cryptozoology in different subjects. The study in which the search for unknown animals, like the Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, like we all know, or based off of what I'm about to say now, or, or maybe they are, or maybe they're unconnected after all. In 1976, the def- uh, a dense tree surrounding Marin Old Church in Cornwall, England, became a variable magnet for this diabolical beast that was cherished as the owl man uh it just like it's very similar to the mothman yeah except it was seen going in and out of a ufo by two different people okay another so this is me talking now another account is the headless bird man i cannot think the actual name of it but it's from the uk again okay which was uh, very owl like without a head but the eyes were in like the chest it's like an owl with a stumpy neck like a blemmy owl Kinda, and it was seen going in inside of UFOs. Mm. So the, the Redfern goes to talk about that. You know, maybe it's more of them actually being owls, like our owl-like creatures, not that it's a screen memory. Like the aliens are actually bird avian. creatures. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Hmm. Have you ever seen a baby owl? Oh, I I have, and it is creepy. Everybody at home, take a break. Pull up the picture of a baby barn owl. Barn. Even even a picture, even a video. Like, a video. watch a video of them. They, man, that's very similar to a gray. Yeah. Now, let's say grays are baby versions or juvenile versions, and the adults have feathers. The adults look like Mothman for some reason. I wonder, yeah, you know, if there was, like, those aliens, use, or aliens, quote, unquote, they seem fly, flying into the ships. You gotta imagine if the adults look like owls, their babies gotta look like baby owls, and the baby owls do look horrific. <laughs> Not horrific. I mean, they I, do. Baby owls look birds. horrific. No, they look like little aliens. They do. If that was running at you in the alley, well, you, like if you didn't know you what it was, it. It was like, no, you would take off. I mean, if it tall. ran at you, like yeah, but like, if it ran at you, like the chupacabra supposedly does, yeah, like a chupacabra, <laughs> yeah. and they make their horrible hissing noises. <laughs> It's give, running at you like it's going to kill you. I give it a Ray Finkel. Oh, sorry, I hit the th- microphone. Instead. I'm more scared of a little animal with an attitude. L- Say, like, like, like a Tasmanian t- Like a devil. Tasmanian devil or like a honey badger. Yeah. You know, when they run at you with a confidence. Oh, it's like, you know, your leg's getting bit. Like, no, you, you're going to kill you. Tasmanian tiger or Tasmanian devils kill red kangaroos. Oh, really? They start ripping out the back, uh, back ends of their legs so they can't get away. <laughs> Vicious. Yeah, and they're like 10 pounds at max. Yeah. Oh, they're tiny. A red kangaroo stands six foot tall. 
and they just run up and they st- grab their leg tendons and start ripping them out of their legs while they're still alive. I, you better be wearing boots that day. That's what I'm saying. Is little animals Scary, with yeah. commitment yeah. show you like if mink or was it if weasels got forty pounds, uh, all all megafauna would be dead. <laughs> weasels? Yeah. There's a biologist and I can't think of his name out of Canada. That was studying like weasels and minks and stuff like that and their ability to kill prey. I think they documented a six ounce weasel killing like a 16 pound turkey. Good Lord. And they did the math and it would be like, so it'd take a 30 pound weasel to kill a bull elephant. <laughs> That's insane. That is literally insane. Can you imagine? Because what they do is they just they crawl and they bite onto the neck. Yeah. And they wrap around to where nothing can grab them. And they just hang there until you die. Gosh. Yeah, I wouldn't want to run into a weasel then. Not to be confused with the weasel, Polly Shore, but <laughs> a weasel. Well, neither of them. I really wouldn't want to run into. Before I move off of Nick Redfern's article completely, the very end, he starts talking about that owls and shapeshifters are a common thing with some Native American, South American, and African tribes mm. and cultures. Is this maybe that they actually aren't putting on a screen memory that they're actually these things they're actually turning into owls and then turning back into their things? Recently, a Who's podcast. It was Tony's. It was on uh, the Confessionals. He had them describing an entity. So this guy came on, and I don't know. I'm describing another podcast's encounter, but this was kind of pertinent to this part of the story, where he had a ghost that he called like the Colonel or whatever in his house as a kid. It was like an old World War One colonel. Okay. Uh, and it was fine. Like, it was like a comforting ghost, apparently, and stuff like that. Like, he felt comfort. Like, uh, I can't remember. He said he always gave him, like, a positive couple words. Okay. So, it was like, to me, it was more like something like a grandfather. Right. Maybe it was, I guess what I mean, I thought, is it is maybe is his grandfather coming back to saying, you know, just at Help time. him along the path. Uh, but he had another entity come in trying to mimic that ghost okay and it was kind of distorted and he could feel like evil from it and he called it out and it started shape-shifting into a clown oh uh but it was the way he described it was so bad and what it was trying to do is trying to pick a different comforting image gotcha and then the key called it out again he was a kid he was like 10 yeah he called it out again and then it got extremely aggressive and frustrated and it started knocking stuff over in his room his mom heard it and came right in, in the room, and it jumped out the window. It had to physically jump out the window. That's so, okay. Like, like, so it was actually there physically. It was physically there, and that kind of gave me this kind of vibes. That yeah, it, maybe like, that it's an alien or whatever we think aliens are, and it tried to pick an image that he was already comfortable with that was paranormal, and then it switched to the clown when it caught him out. When, yeah. it, when he called it out, so he's like, "Okay, I want to take pick another one." Yeah, uh, and I've heard this with like. Uh, there was, uh, oh gosh, the Kryptonaut podcast just did Easter Bunny special with Easter bunnies being seen. Okay. That's what made me think of people, these kids seeing these real bunnies, these real Easter bunnies, but they always kind of have a, a sickly sweet note to them. Yeah. And it's like, is this an entity like this? Kind of like those old photos of like, you know, you ever seen pictures of the Easter bunny from like the 30s, yeah, they're 40s? Yeah, terrifying. Yeah, extremely. But is it is it an entity trying to pick... A friendlier shape. It's for some reason, like they don't care. Like when they take adults, mm-hmm. they'll just lock you down and let you be terrified the whole time. But is it so? When we, is it that kids are harder to abduct because Ooh, yeah. their brains are more fluidic? That's kind of what I was. And you thinking. can't make them sit still that long. Like meant like with the, with the whatever they are using to trank us out. Right. I think uh, like as an adult, you kind of get locked into. I don't know your version of reality. So, or like, but is that easier to paralyze you then? Right. That's yeah. And I, these kids' brains are always changing, so yeah. you can't paralyze them. So, is it easier to make them come along with you by taking a friendly shape? That that's kind of what I would think. I like a kid's mind is still being molded. I guess so. It's ima- their imagination. We talked freer. about Williard earlier. Yeah, Williard UFO abduction. Like the the monkey and then the mummy had to literally. Grab one of the kids and take off with them. Yeah, the monkey. And then the mummy. Yeah, the mummy too. Yeah, that was a uh, that's a weird one. If you haven't so listened taking, to that one, go back. But taking shapes that kids kind of like. Yeah. And then it didn't work, so he's like, all right. 
I'll, I'll, I'll show gonna, you my true I'm just going to grab you. Yeah, in the mummy form. But there was one that they described uh, on the Kryptonaut podcast that was like, it was like a stuffed bunny, like an, like a toy bunny. Okay. I was walking around and mimicking, like calling a kid over with his hands and into the woods. And he didn't go. And as it turned around to leave, he seen what he described as a, as a theropod dinosaur wearing it on its face. But he couldn't see it from the front. He could only see it when it turned around. Mm. And there's all these stories of like dinosaurs being in kids' bedrooms and stuff like that. Yeah. Kids are like obsessed with dinosaurs. I was, you know, I still am. But as a kid, you know, a lot of kids. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if they can project a thought or a, a vision in your mind, I guess that your eyes could see, they could probably go in and just see what you're thinking, like what your interests are. You I mean, know. or just taking a guess. Kits aren't that hard to read of, on average. Yeah. Oh, Kids yeah. like dinosaurs. There could be clues around their room. Kids like big monkeys. You know, right, it's yeah. like, it's not that hard. Kids like fire trucks and rabbits. And mm-hmm. now he told his grandma that story. His grandma sternly grabbed him and said, if you ever see it again, never follow it. And that's all she would say about it. Yeah. She probably had a similar experience. But she is also, he described her as an old German lady. Mm, she knew the legends. And fey folk. Yeah. That's very fey folky. The lore. Because you never go with them. You never follow them. And there's a lot of stuff for me, specifically with the greys, that interlock with a lot of the fey folk stuff. Mm. Ooh, like, you want to get into it or not? Not right now. Okay. Bookmark it. Yeah. So I have a couple of short stories for you with people encountering owls with what they feel were alien encounters. Okay. So you ready for those? Yeah. Okay, and this one's called Behind the Tree. Recently, a U.S. resident tells a story that happened to her and her friends four years ago. One day around 7 p.m., she, along with her roommate and another close friend, set off into the forest road near an abandoned railroad. Bad bad things already. <laughs> it's got all the monikers. If I had to guess, I'm going to guess they were 24 to 27-year-old women. I'm um, just from horror movie knowledge. Okay. 24 to 27-year-old women. And they're like, let's go for a walk. Let's pick the the woods and the abandoned train tracks. Right, yeah. Uh, there was a joke at Post Town this past weekend uh, that I looked at down one of these hallways. And I'm like, I'm not going down there. And the lady behind me made the joke like, oh, you would survive the horror movie. We we would just walked right down there without even thinking about it. Yeah, exactly. Because I had like the creepy gate and like the dark hallway. And I'm like, yeah, not for me. I'm going <laughs> to stay where the lights are. And they're like, yeah, let's go. So back to the story. Uh, we like to... <laughs> We like to explore the various deserted places near our city, and this was not new to us. We were five miles out of the city along the trees, walking along the path. It got dark very quickly at this time, and we had forgotten to take any lanterns. Oh, forgotten. Horror movie. Yeah, literally the script of it. Suddenly, a very strange feeling came over, and I started to, I started to feel very sick. I looked at my friend, and by their appearance, it was clear to me that they were not feeling well either. We stopped and started looking around with our eyes wide open and uh, said, let's go back. I agree, And they all agreed with me. We were all frightened by the sudden nervous sensation and the compressed feeling of all three of us. It was a feeling of intense fear, as if there was something nearby that we should be very afraid of. And this nausea suddenly and very loudly, sharply, uh, so that, that would, and this nausea, then suddenly, a very sharp, loud, and sharp sound came from us. Then we turned around. We saw a very large, white, owl-like bird flying lowly above us. She flew completely silent, fluttering her wings slowly, and disappeared behind the trees. After that, we quickly started to walk back down the path. Strange clicking sounds uh, continued to be heard around us. It was a, as if something was moving quickly behind us in the trees and snapping soil branches. At one point, my friend and I looked back and immediately noticed a white humanoid silhouette coming from behind the trees nearby, uh, which disappeared immediately. We both managed to spot his round face. Everything was so scary. I immediately told my friends, don't tell anyone. Uh, given my roommate, meanwhile, my roommate looked at us in uh, Incredulously, word I don't know. Incredulously, sure. She didn't see this creature, but she was still scared like us. Then I told her we had to run home quickly, and we did. I told this story to my friends and acquaintances, but no one believed me. 
Someone said it was probably just an owl, and everything seemed to us because of the dreaded dark forest environment. But I remember it perfectly when that creature looked at me. When I peeked from behind the trees, it obviously was not a bird or an owl because it was high and his neck was uh, up and his upper body were clearly visible. Unfortunately, because of the darkness, I did not see his face well. I remember he was completely white. He was as tall as a man. Mm. Now, I may get in trouble for this story. Uh-oh. Why? Because I can probably debunk it. Ooh. Okay. And I don't like doing this very often. Well, let's hear it. So, first off, I don't know where this took place, so this may not be an option. But snowy owls are very large, up to three to four foot tall owls Mm -hmm. that are completely white. Mm -hmm. And great horned owls, while not being completely white, are even larger. Okay. Snowy owls are famous for becoming incredibly aggressive towards humans. So, if you get when they have a nesting site, yeah, and they always attack in pairs. Ooh. They'll even walk on the ground and do threat displays where they stretch their necks all the way out. Do they click? Yes. Oh, gosh. Everybody, remember when uh, Eric sent us that noise that some lady recorded in Texas? And I'm like, that's an owl because of clicking. Mm, okay. Owls click like the predator. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, owls are incredibly intimidating animals when they want to be. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind, snowy owls and uh, great horned owls are direct competition with bald eagles and golden eagles. Okay. Uh, they are big, powerful, strong birds, and they have extremely long necks that most people don't realize. They tuck them into their body. You see them sitting on their heads. They can stretch their necks very long. You know when you see an owl turn its head 360 degrees or whatever? Right, yeah. It's not quite turning its head like that. What's it doing? It's twisting its big, long neck around. Okay. So it's a little different. Their mechanics going on inside the feathers are very hard to see. As you say, yeah. Like a lot of times their neck actually dips down below their chest and comes back up. Huh. So like when, like you say, if you, if you look at the chicks, owl chicks, baby owls, uh, they have incredibly long necks. Yeah, it, they do actually. And it yeah, looks yeah. like it disappears when they're older. It doesn't disappear. They kind of tuck them down. So yeah, def- here they, yeah, it just grew up. They grew into it or something. No, I don't know. They still have those strong, really long necks. So the one on the ground looking around, I think it was a, a ma- the male standing up really tall. Yeah. And like here, you know, stay away from my nest. Yeah. Uh, owls have been known to even like pull siding off of houses and stuff like that. They'll build their nest close to a house, and then they'll get mad at the house. <laughs> uh, they're pretty powerful birds. They Why are not? extremely powerful birds. Yeah. Um, kind of reminds me when we were, uh, had to butcher some birds the other week. You had to pull their neck out a little bit. You should have gave a, a graphic warning before you got into that story. Well, I thought it was pretty tame. I'm not going to go anymore, but their necks are a lot, birds' necks are a lot longer, longer than, than you realize. They're a lot longer than you realize. Because they can tuck them into their, like, their chest a little bit. Yeah. Well, they do. Like a turtle. Like, think about how yeah. a turtle has a really long neck, but it'll tuck it into its body. Uh-huh. Yeah, I never thought that until we did that deed. And I'm like, oh, yeah. So, not saying this that's what happened here, but that is a natural thing I could say with owls. And owls are very cryptic creatures. Yeah. And when people actually have encounters with owls, you know, it's they feel like it's very... Owls are very common birds. Mm-hmm. You just never see them, ever. Right. They're very cryptic. Yeah. Even in town here, we have a large population of owls, of screech owls that live here in town. Hmm. You hardly ever see them. Ever, yeah. H- Hundreds like- live in this town, if not thousands. I'll tell you my story later. Oh, Okay. I was gonna say, and I live out in the you know the country, and I've seen by the woods a barred owl, maybe three or four times in my life, and they're one of the more common owls in Ohio. Barn owls, so the like mainly in terms of the structure, barns. Yeah, I've seen maybe two dozen times in my life. And really, we had a we had them living in our barn for a year. Yeah, and I maybe seen them four times that year. I don't know if I've ever seen one in the wild. Like, like they had their babies up there, and we never knew where they were. Oh, really? And they had four of these big birds that were living in the attic of the barn. We never could find them. Yeah, but you'd hear them go, <laughs> like clicking and then hissing every once in a while. Interesting. You're like, you're, I know I'm close to you. I just don't know where you are. Right? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, because you think it's gonna be a rodent or something living in there, but making those kind of noises. And then you pull a hay bale back, and it's four Aliens. naked birds. Yeah, yeah. All right, for the next one? (laughs) Yeah. This one's called White Owl on the Road. About 10 years ago, I was traveling late in the evening with my girlfriend as we were driving down the road and passing by a lake. Suddenly, in the middle of the road, I saw a large white owl land. I had to completely stop the car so I wouldn't drive over it. 
I started to push or I started pushing on the horn and flashing the headlights to scare the owl away so it would fly away. But she just looked at the car and didn't move. So I decided to slowly approach her. As I started to approach it, we both clearly saw that there was no white owl on the road, but something weak, white and tall, apparently humanoid. It laid on the road, occupying two, almost two lanes. I could clearly see a humanoid limbs and shoulders. My girlfriend and I were shocked. We called out. Was that an alien? Or what, what, what the hell was that? Was it an alien? But as I got closer, in something incomprehensible way, the creature again became an owl, or rather, two owls. Mm. One owl was sitting in the middle of the road, and the other was laying dead next to it. The living owl spread its wings wide in a menacing pose for us. This is me talking for just a second. That is a defensive posture for owls. They kind of like hood up like a turkey. But okay. The, but how a turkey fans its tail, they fan their wings. Gotcha. To look big. Yeah. Uh, in order to come across them, uh, in order not to come across them, I forced, I was forced to get out of their way, particularly driving on the grass. Um, shocked, my girlfriend kept saying, faster, 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 get us back to town, get us back to town. I find it very strange. First, in our area, a white owl is rarely seen, but here is two at this time. Secondly, is it possible to explain the transformation of the owl into a tall alien-like creature and then back to two owls through pareidolia? It's, what saying. It's, it's very hard to say that this was a pareidolia case. Yeah, that's what they're saying? Yeah. Okay. Uh, dusk or something else. My eyes could see it clearly. My brain was well aware that it was just a humanoid, and I really didn't like it at all. My brain has never played such games on me. Third, even if it were explained that everything was just or with the words, it just looked like it. They explained the length of the humanoid with the wings of the owl uh, that were widely spaced. It still does not explain how the owls could occupy almost the entire width of the road as its bodies were in, as the humanoid was. Three weeks after the incident, I was traveling with two friends on the road in the same area with my windows open. At one point, a large white owl flew out of the tree branches and flew very closely to the window. A little more, uh, he would be in the car. After a few days, I felt ill. When I got home from work and my throat started to hurt a lot, and when I looked in the mirror, I saw a small, even wound in the back of my throat, just beginning to pulp or to palate my tongue. It had a smooth circular shape and a deep look deep without bleeding or any inflammation. When I showed it to my mother, she was horrified. They immediately said I should go to the hospital. But when we both arrived at the hospital, the doctor examined me and found nothing in my throat. Mm. The wound had completely gone. Mm. When I began to insist that there was a wound, the doctor looked at me as if I was crazy, then said if there was really a wound, it would not have been able to heal in that short of a time. However, both me and my mother saw it. In the years following, I was continually harassed by the thought of the wound. I stopped smoking, and it became a habit for me to check my throat every morning and every night. I didn't see the wound anymore, but it still worried me a lot. That is weird. Okay, there's a lot going on in that story. Yeah, where do you want to start? Well, the shape-shifting in the pareidolia comment. I mean, so he's saying that... It, he's saying it would be impossible for all of this to be explained away by pareidolia. Right. I so guess. first he seen one owl sitting in the road. It swooped down and landed in the road. He stopped the car and started honking, flashing. And then all of a sudden he sees this white, tall entity laying yeah. flat against the road, stretched out across both lanes. Jeez. Him okay. and his girlfriend both see this. Yeah. They freak out. And then instantly it transforms back into one owl and then another owl that was laying there dead. Yeah. So... Oh, yeah, it's just... And then the owl starts taking a threatening posture. So trying to unpack this, I mean, I don't even know where to start or even how to explain this. Because if it's... why okay. He had another witness in the car. Keep that in right. mind. This, he didn't see this by himself. So they both both witnessed an owl swoop down and then this creature and then it... And then it's our transform into a humanoid. Humanoid. <laughs> right. A tall white is kind of the description I think yeah. of. Yeah. And then back to two owls, like separate owls. Is it projecting the image of the owls? Like, uh oh, we got to keep our cover. But why swoop down in the first place to begin with? You know, well, it, 
Now, well, if it's projecting, maybe it was already laying in the road and it had to like it pushes pushes this image out like oh like an owl landed in front of me, mm-hmm. so it just doesn't appear. So it's not as freaky. Or did, yeah, did someone maybe already, this alien already got hit? Yeah, it's supposed to say, is there two actually two aliens and one's like invisible and he got hit as it was invisible and the other one was swooping in to like help him. Daryl got a hold of it. Yeah, it, whoosh, slingshot right between the eyes. No, I don't. I don't know. This is a weird one. <laughs> Daryl, he did, uh, and it limped away before he could fully catch it. Right. Yeah. No, I don't know. This is really, really weird. Or is it something more like Faye? Where they are, you know, they're changing forms and they're kind of like, like uh, it rules. Yeah. Where they have to, they when they manifest a different shape, they they are they are bound by the rules of that shape. Which I can see that. So that's how they killed the clown in it. Is that when he became a clown or whatever, he was actually flesh. Yeah. So you could actually hurt him. Right. Yeah. It was his biggest weakness. Hmm. So is that the thing? Is it when they're, you know, maybe where there was the one of the owls and got hit, or you know, it's. It's maybe actually struggling to keep up the charade. Right, yeah. Or the flashing of the lights and the honking of the horns. Like kind of ruined the disguise yeah. dis- for a second. It disrupted it or it couldn't keep it all together. I don't know. Maybe because I don't know how they project like those images in your mind. See, yeah, I don't know if it's projecting or it's actually changing into those things. Or if it's actually that too, yeah. See, I kind of think for this, like this, I think it's actually changing into these things and Flushing. it was losing control. Yeah. Yeah. And it changing is it like. Uh, what's that called? Like an alchemy, like trans transmutation, transmutation. Yeah, like right before your eyes, is there something, and then y- you honk your horn, you get these loud noises that throws off its frequency. You know that then it, it's just weird. This humanoid owl, and then he had he, so later on the he had something horrible in his throat. Right, his mother seen yeah, it. Yeah, that's the second weird, and it disappeared. That's very strange. And then he kept having reoccurrences with the same owl. A lot of abductees report that hmm. reoccurrences with owls. Maybe whatever it was was attached to him. Like, you know, there was a bunch point. of these kids, or not kids, young adults, like teenagers or older teenagers, saying that like they'd have an owl tap on the window every night and right before they went to sleep. And then they are long term abductees. And what it was is was the gray alien saying, "We're you know we're here to take you for the night." Yeah. And their brain would just be like, "Nope, it's an owl tapping on the window." See, and if they can project themselves to appear as an owl. You know, or, or any creature, whatever they are, like themselves, can they project any image really out in the wild that doesn't have to be them? It can just be like in the air that can just make an owl flying by that's not actually there. Yeah, sure. Right? I I'm, mean, there's no rules. Right. Why we wouldn't don't know that the be rules. a thing? Right. I don't know. I don't know either, but I don't see why why they couldn't do that. If they can change themselves, they should be able to put any image out there anywhere it is. Sure. Yeah. Just disruption, like holy crap! There's an owl flying by me, so you're looking this way when right in no, front I think of you. That happens a lot. Whether it's fae folk, yeah. actual aliens, or whatever, we'll get to that in a minute. Maybe they'll have a red Jimmy squirrel up on the <sighs> branch to distract you. But this encounter is just so creepy for so many different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> if it wouldn't have changed to a, a human, yeah, a humanoid, I would have said another natural thing. Yeah, because owls uh, they don't directly mate mate for life, but they do have long term commitments to partners, and they will defend their partners. Mm. So I would I would have said is the other owl was already dead on the road, right? And, and the just, male was swooping down to defend the female, and they kept and they, they just come across it. it. Like they right just didn't the right see time. the dead one, right? Yeah, and he was doing the defensive posture, saying, you know, you know, stay away from my mate, stay away from my mate. Mm-hmm. Uh, the owls will not like owls will not back down. They're very, you know, powerful animals, right? Yeah, they ain't scared. I mean, they will eat a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, it's so to me that if it wasn't for it changing into a humanoid. And then unchanging. It's weird. And then having that slit in their throat. Yeah, that is a whole other thing. And he kept, and once again, owls will defend their nest. So I can see owls chasing cars if it's the same spot in the road. Like, yeah. say, that their nest is right there. Yeah, what it do? Like, scratch his throat with his well, talent? No, no, I'm just saying if it wasn't for that aspect no, of the story. I know, yeah. But then there's that side of it. So that makes me think of a repeat abduction. Yeah, I wonder if it was like an uh, implant spot. I wonder if it or, uh, no, so they describe, and we'll have next time we have Daryl on we'll to talk about this. A lot of people describe like the melon ballers melon. taking it's taking scoops of flesh. Oh, gotcha. Like and like that's kind of what it described to me. Not an implant site, not an injection site, but like a scoop. Yeah, like a little an, plug, a, an actual removal of tissue. Mm-hmm. And then 
I've heard like we have ultra like fast healing machines. You know what I mean? So I definitely think there could be this goo they slap on you and be like, all right, this will be gone in a day. Right. Or yeah, maybe not even. Or yeah, or whatever. You know what I mean? And they like beam some frequency, like healing frequency down on you and it heals it. I don't know. Or they make you like they're just screwing with you. It's another projection. It could be that too, yeah. They're just screwing with you. And with the alien phenomena, there's definitely a heartlessness and even a, a step past that where they're purposely screwing with you. Yeah. A distraction. That or no, I mean like mentally wanting you to snap. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, like this, like making you in your even so you have one witness, so you know it was real. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then nobody sees it. Diabolical. It, but it's like it's, it's true it's, though. Un, it's like it's a mind game. I can see taking a species and tagging them and all that stuff. That's fine. But the maliciousness with it. Yeah. Like as a biologist, I'm saying. If you were actually coming here to study us or whatever from another planet, mm-hmm. I could see taking them, t- tagging them. But the whole maliciousness, like the uncaring and the pain causing, like, and like uh, that's a whole nother yeah, level. Just, if just, you cared that much to learn about another species, you would take care to not hurt the, you know. Wait till, wait till this follow up episode of Daryl and me. They even da- heard the first one. Uh, um, I, that's what I meant. I meant follow up to this oh. particular episode you're listening to now. I mean, we dive more deep into this stuff, so I I want to get more into that, but just I think Daryl will answer a lot of these questions. You ready for the next one? Oh, yeah. That, okay, that one was a weird. First story was kind of weird. That one was really weird. Last one I have for you before we get into what is this. Okay. White owls and UFOs. And they're almost always white owls, too. That's the other thing. Kind of noticed So the only that. two really white white species we have here in North America are barn owls. And, snowy- and they're not white, they're white faces and white bellies, and their backs are a tan. Okay. There are subspecies that are whole kinds of different colors. One of the most successful birds on the planet. Barn owls? Yes. Any piebald barn owls? Yeah, there are. Oh. <laughs> There's melanistic, too. There's all black ones. Really? Uh, and <laughs> I they, just wanted to throw and out And then snowies. Yeah, snowy owls. The snowies are the exact opposite in the spectrum. Uh, they are a lot bigger, but they are their populations have been in great decline over the last hundred years. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I believe they're red listed now. Like they're critically endangered pretty much everywhere. But they're bigger than barn owls. They're a big chunky owl. And they're more white. Yeah, they're almost all white with little black dots. Okay. Okay, sorry. Continuing. White owls and UFOs. It happened at three PM in Georgia. Three of my friends, my girlfriend and I were returning by car from a party. Uh, uh on the way of the event. We were talking or taking my girlfriend home. I was driving. One of my friends was sitting next to me in the front seat. The other two friends and the girl were in the back seat. Suddenly my friend in the front seat and I simultaneously noticed a bright blue light coming from the night sky. He pointed at an object hidden in the clouds. It was impossible to get a good look at the shape. By the time we knew or what was ha- or what it was, the object had already disappeared behind the trees. We told the others about what we saw. We soon arrived at the girl's house and left her there. The boys and I were driving back on the same road. I was driving about 55 miles an hour. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a large white owl appeared. Within seconds, the owl flew very low over the road, parallel to the car, and was so close you could reach out and touch it. Mm. Then she flew away. By a mile later, a second white owl appeared, just like the first. It was flying parallel to the car, low above the road. When the white owl appeared for the second time, everyone in the car could no longer contain their fear. They shouted like savages at the same time asking me to slow down so the owl could fly away. I stopped the car and saw the same blue, strange blue light in the sky. By the time we knew what was happening, everything was gone. Neither the light nor the owl appeared again. Mm. So again, owl flying parallel to the car. Mm-hmm. This is I want to say this is another abduction thing. Yeah. Where... It's one of these things to make you like. Uh, there's this is reported with road construction too, like Betty and Barney Hill had road construction, put them on the other road. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, there's not real road construction. Like, it's some th- kind of image or manifestation they're putting on you. Right. So when you get back from the abduction, you like. What I'm saying is the abduction happened in the middle of this hour flying next to the car. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So when you get put back, that's what you're focused on. You don't really notice the time or whatever, and you keep going. So yeah, like no time is missing for you. It's right, because you're step. still you're yeah. still engaging in the same scenario you left. Yeah, gotcha. Man, that's tricky. That is tricky. And, you know, I think you might be right here with this alien abduction 
and the owl flying parallel thing because I don't think I'm assuming that's not a natural behavior for owls. It screams Mothman ish. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't think about that for the Mothman. Uh, oh, he did it a lot. Right. A lot. And there was a lot of what's going Another on. Another weird thing with all these owl accounts. Yeah. Is a lot of them have feel like it's always a female owl. Why is that? Or I have no idea. You, how do you get that vibe before well, they say she? They keep saying she. Everybody says she when they're referring to the owl. Okay. And I, these are the three I included, but there's others. And it was just weird that everybody kept putting this female indentation on the owl. Hmm. And I don't know if it's re- like uh, something to really look into or not. I just thought it was something that kept popping up over right. a bunch of stories. A reoccurrence. Yeah. And so some alien abductees, uh, older people, and a lot of times these are kids or, or young people. Yeah. Every one of these I read was a young person or a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, a lot of times with older people, they still have this female entity when they get abducted. It's almost like a handler. Okay. And some people think it's the alien-human hybrid, and it's always like a motherly thing to kind of like calm down the human they're they're working on. Yeah. It's weird. Well, I could see that being like a, a calming type of energy. You know, if it's a motherly figure or a, just a feminine figure taking care of you, you know, if whatever this, I mean, not taking care, but you know what I, I know, mean. Yeah, I, I know. When you're laid out in a slab or something, that's it's, more of a comforting thing to see. It's weird. Then an owl picking you apart or something. So all this stuff. Oh, it's just weird. Why owls? Yeah, why? That is a good question. Why owls? So I have several different answers for you. Oh, okay. And we've already covered, I think, all of them besides maybe one. Like, okay. It, owls are actually doing this. And I don't mean that as in the goofy way. I mean that the creatures that are abducting you or whatever are very owl-like, like we talked about the owl man. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, that it's actually an owl-like thing. Yeah. That is doing this. They're not shape shifting. They're not mimicking nothing. You're just you're seeing an alien owl. Yeah, an owl creature. Very similar. From, not from here. Co-evo- or, uh, convergent evolution. Yeah. There you go. Where it's owls are extremely great predators. Owls also. Uh, I didn't mention this as the it's first good, story. Owls actually fly silently. It's a good body plan. Yeah. You just, they yeah. have specialized feathers so they can fly almost a hundred percent silently. That's scary. I mean, if you're in the woods middle of the night and an owl is actually hunting you. So what do you think? What percentage are you going to give? It's actually an owl-like alien doing this. An owl-like alien? Like an owl-like creature. Right. Maybe it's not an alien, interdimensional, whatever you want to say. The creature itself actually looks like an owl. An owl cryptid. An owl-like cryptid. Um, I just, not much. I don't put much percentage into this one. What do you think about the it's just an owl thought? Like there's no, there's no people, like I said earlier, owls are rarely seen by people, even though they're extremely common birds, they have, they can be quite aggressive defending their territory. Owls are naturally very curious. So is it not really, is the abduction part not really happening, but the owl is the real part of the encounters. Like the owls actually tapping on your window. The owl is just being aggressive because it's protecting its nest. Well, that your first story, I can kind of fall into, I could believe that being that the case, but I'd say for the most part, Probably not, but that like, but in certain scenarios, sure, why not? Like that first one, I can believe it being an owl, like just straight up being an owl or whatever it was, two owls. I can't remember the first story, but that one, I sure, like that one can be explained away, you know, with straight owl biology. That's that one's not too much of a stretch, but for the most part, I th- I think it's too much of a common occurrence for it to just always be a oh, barn owl or a snowy owl every time this is happening. You know what I, I mean? I can believe barn owl every time. I'm no, I don't think this. I don't think this. Yeah. But talking uh, s- skeptically, barn owls are everywhere. Right. There is no state besides maybe Hawaii, and I have to look. Mm-hmm. There is no state in the U.S. where they do not have a healthy population. The barn owls. Yeah. Right. Barn owls are native. It, it's this whole continent everywhere. But it's the behaviors that makes me say it's probably not an owl yeah, every time. Sure. I, I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just saying yeah. there are owls. Right, right. Literally right. everywhere. Large owls. Big old boys. Everywhere. Yeah. Oh, should we can I throw out another owl fact? Sure. That we've probably talked about on the show. Yeah. Owls glow in the dark to other owls. Owls are bioluminescent to other owls. You are hundred percent right. So fun fact. And then don't let me forget at the very end, I'll tell my owl story. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Here's another one. 
the government is using owl puppets or projections to mess with us. Ooh. This is a government thing. Ooh. They're using their what a Project Blue Beam, all this stuff. Yeah. They're using owls to distract us when they grab us. I, I do fully believe a good chunk of the UFO abduction stuff is people doing it to people and using aliens as cover. You think like people as in like humans, government, government and stuff like that. Higher ups, whatever nefarious groups, people with a lot of money and a lot of power doing this to people of normal stature. Yeah. Oh, I can believe that. Yeah. So are they using, are these people using even mechanical owls? They just did that whole thing. Owl drones. They, did you see that? They what? just posted on their Facebook. No, the a drone company is remaking extinct birds into drones to scare off some of their prey animals as a defense mechanism for fields. Really? Yeah. And they look real. Really? This is soft disclosure. No, it's not soft disclosure. It's not, it's not soft disclosure. They're saying that they exist, like the technology exists. It's not soft disclosure. That's just True. saying it exists. That's Maybe, disclosure. Yeah, disclosure. Maybe it's already been around those That's, like for a long time. No, that was two years ago. Yeah. Oh man. But so that and they're revealing it to the public. Yeah, they're like, yeah, look, we made this one as it's this predator, predatory bird. So you know someone else in higher up. <laughs> years ago. Yes. So is this a thing that US government is using for some reason? Oh are they re- are they using these birds to get close to you to release a gas to knock you out for the rest of the abduction? Oh man! Well, maybe are they using them as guards, as as you know, whatever, d- like dumbs and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, or just to get a like. And we've some never said it on this show, but what's something. a dumb? A deep underground military base. Okay. So uh, I'm just yeah. saying, I I use the term dumb. I've never officially used it on the main show. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So, um, oh, man, drone owls. Mm-hmm. Or puppets, or or we're, projections. We're right, right. All if the above. Anybody, have you? Did you watch that with the Chinese, with the whales flying in the sky and everything like that? Yeah, I see. I don't know how much credence I have in that. If it's actually looking like that in person, or I if, have seen one in Florida. Yeah, it was a water projection show. Right, where like they, they the spray water. The elephant looked real. Yeah, like if I didn't know what I was going into, I would have thought there was an elephant behind the water. Yeah. I mean, it's craziness. I just don't it was know. like an elephant walking by and stuff like that. It was for the circus. Right. They don't, they're don't. not allowed to have animals or elephants anymore. Okay. Uh, and it looked like an elephant. It felt like an elephant. Like they had speakers and stuff like that. You could feel the elephant walking. Yeah. I would have bet everything there was an elephant behind the waterfall. That's crazy. I mean, just seeing the videos, that's, it's That's the technology a, cir- a circus had. Yeah. <laughs> I know. A circus. So imagine when they can project into the they sky. They can't clean the popcorn machine. Yeah, <laughs> but they have a holographic elephant, elephant that yeah. you can feel walking. <laughs> you can feel, oh man, 4D. Um, I yeah, if they're projecting that, that'd be nuts. That'd be, but I don't like. I don't think they could project an owl flying next to your car. I think they can. Really, I do think they can because government technology or hidden government technology or private benefactor technology. Well, I mean, I guess like yeah, and with uh, what what we is disclosed well, about MK Ultra. About being able to do things like that, mm-hmm. projecting those thoughts. I mean, yeah, I guess. But what you would do, what I think you would do, is either have a little tiny drone that's producing a gas cloud or something around it to get the projection. Odorless and colorless gas. I don't know. No, like you need something for the light to reflect off of. Oh, you mean like that? I gotcha. So th- there's okay. actually a thing there, but there's another projector somewhere else you can't see. Gotcha. That's projecting an image mm-hmm. over it. Yeah. Oh, I could see so that. So it does have mass. Yeah, I could see that. Hmm. That's what they were doing at the thing. They had wa- they had a uh, vapor in the air. Right. Yep. That's how those those were. That's why I never know if I believe the ones. I like, think it did look like that. What? That that Chinese whale show. I had do think it looked vapor. as I do think it looked as good as it did. Oh, on video. Yeah, it's just the stuff. I just can't. I can't believe anything I see online when it comes. I to think it even probably looked better. Uh, you ever seen the big drone shows they do now out west? Like, yeah. They're that's replacing fireworks. Nuts. That's. Very nuts because they're so coordinated. But they make it look like a big thing in the sky. Uh huh. Okay. So what are you doing for this? What? I mean, I'm going more towards the projecting the th- the thing into your mind, and then you're seeing that. But you're it's not physically there. It's just a. It's just a. What percentage are you giving it? Keep in mind, I have three more after this that may be better. Forty two. Ooh, yeah, that's leaving yourself a lot of room. That's I'm confident on that one. These are demons doing this. Well, I mean, that's part of it, too. Demons can project thoughts into your mind, too. 
So it's kind of we owls fall in a really weird space in religions around the world, mm -hmm. where some religions hold them high in high high regard, mm -hmm. and some religions demonize them. Yeah, and I don't think it's owls that are being demonized. I think it's their looks that are being demonized because they're very similar to actual demon like creatures. Okay, these giant black void eyes and stuff like that. I I don't know if this is demons doing this, but this is I've seen this. Somebody said this with this. This is. Demons just happen to they, they like this owl shape or the shapeshifters or these more demonic like entities that are shapeshifting into owls and outside of owls. Mm -hmm. I could see that 100%. So, so uh, what, what percentage are you given demons or demon like entities? Well, I'm adding I'm adding that to my last one because nope. I think it overlaps. Nope. I think it's not allowed. But yeah, it's within it's when within my purview. Not allowed. Um, I'm doing it. I don't care. I'm breaking, I added this. I'm breaking the rules. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get you to say seven percent from another episode. Seven percent? What do you mean? You just did it for me. Thank you. Ah, uh, what's that? I don't even know what I just walked into. Uh, but uh, no, I think whatever is doing this, um, when it comes to projecting images and thoughts into your mind, comes from a demonic state, and I do think it is demons. Um, and control of this are behind it. Now, maybe maybe they're not doing it directly. I don't know, but if you trace it back, well, however this phenomenon is happening, a demon's behind it, in my mind. I do. I do truly believe that. Unless it's an actual owl. But if it's not an actual owl, if it is a fake projection or anything, <laughs> it's, it's demon owl. behind Poor it. Poor owls. I know. Right, yeah, yeah. Huh. It's just a normal owl. Demon! Snowy owls are demons. What... <laughs> Next T-shirt. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? What percentage for demons? So I'm mixing it with my 42, so we'll go 59%. Mm. This <laughs> next one is a cryptid kind of that we've talked about before. Okay. La Latrusa. Oh, the woman. The owl wait, witch. The owl. Is she, is she the one that's seen like in the white? She's like no, a white that's a different one. That's the weeping woman. Oh yeah, that's like La Lorena or something. Yeah, this is La Latrusa. Okay. Ooh. Many okay. legends and descriptions of La Latrusa are inconsistent, with only a few similarities from story to story. However, widely accepted understanding of La Latrusa describes a figure of a large white owl, Ooh. roughly seven foot tall, with oh. a massive wingspan and the face of an old woman, but. She's that's the in between state. She can be seen as the witch, and she can be seen as just a straight owl. But that's always a white aggressive owl. That's seven foot tall. That's her in between state. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that's when she's down. Yeah, she can be a normal looking owl, and she can be an old woman. But the in when she's like attack mode or whatever, she grows big. Yeah, she's in between. Okay. Yeah, so uh, almost always targeting children and young adults. Mm, okay. Uh, evil. Many believe she's uh, uh, killing the. Or many believe that killing a La Trusa also kills the person inhabiting it. So this is very Wendigo ish. Yeah. With uh, accepting a spirit on board. So very demonic. Uh, yeah, it's weird. And they have like they have, not nest, but kind of like areas they inhabit which they deeply defend. Mm -hmm. They have like, I don't. I'm not. Uh, I'm not great with Mexican folklore. Yeah. Uh, but this is one of their scarier ones. And I mean, some of these that's Mexican folklore. Yes. So the and some of the story, what was that one took place in Georgia? I think you said. Yeah. That's south, I guess. No, it just bleeds into like Texas and Arizona and stuff right, like that yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think there's a hard border. I think it's more of a cultural thing. Right. Yeah. This is their kind of version of a skinwalker. Okay. Not not taken away from either cultures. But very similar. There's a lot of similarities between these. A lot of overlap. Yeah. yeah and behavior and things like that. Yeah. But a lot of truce, depending on who you're listening to. And once again, like there's, it's just like skinwalkers with a variety of cultures that have a very similar legend that mm -hmm. kind of shape it for their own beliefs. It almost likes almost a lot of the stories have it targeting kids and young adults. Right. And old women. But what, a lot of times why it targets old women is because it, when it turns into its old woman form, it will like, it wants to rule the area it's in. So when all their old women, you know how old women bicker. One comes in their turf. Yeah, it, but she'll turn into a giant owl and rip her throat out. Ah, so only I sell doilies on this block. But no, it's it's just a very weird thing. So I had to include the Lila Trusa because the owls that turn into people. Yeah. And they're large white owls. Almost all these stories are large white owls. 
and they almost always have a female connotation. So if you're a... You get this feeling for whatever reason. I don't get why, but a lot of people feel that it's a female. Yeah. I wonder if this is Lala Trusa energy. Ooh, okay. So I don't know if you're like really connecting dots or if you're making a stretch here. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm just saying it, was, yeah. it would be a disservice to not include it. That's true, yeah. Into this. And so if you're a little old lady... And another little lady that appears, you know, kind of owlish approaches you with peanut brittle. Don't accept it. Oh, they so Lelatruces will poison their neighbors and stuff like that. Don't accept it. Uh, there was one story it was on Monsters Among Us that talked about her grandma getting poisoned by a neighbor that was a Lelatrusa. Is there just one though? Like one Lelatrusa? Like no, it's like the wind. Or it's like Skinwalkers. Okay. To where it, you you can become a Lelatrusa. Gotcha. It's like taking on board a spirit. Yeah. Man. Too much going on sometimes. Too much going on. World's a big place. Um, I I could see this being it is. It's it's bigger than we know. It's much bigger than we know, this realm we live in. Um but okay, I'll, I'll give this one a little bit of a little bit of a possibility. Holy moly. Exactly. <laughs> I forgot we had new buttons. I know, I did too. We had new buttons. That's one of the sound bites. That's one of the sound bites. Really, holy moly! I don't want to. I don't want to deal with a lot of the truth. So that would be frightening. So what, what percentage did you give it? You know, I. You know how susceptible I would be to loud. Wait, what's it called again? La La Trusa. I was saying right. You know how susceptible I would be to that. Yes, I'd fall right into it. Yeah. Right into the trap. Yeah, I think you would have like a Wendigo, a Puck Wedgie, and a La La Trusa fighting over for you after you fell into the hole. Because I've all been stalking you for like. Three hours. What do you fell into the hole? Like, like the, walking in the woods and you fall into like a hole in the woods. Okay, yeah. Those, and then all these, these three entities are fighting over you because they've been stalking you for the last three hours because you're... Whistling. <laughs> I'm an old la- woman Touching magnet. everything you shouldn't be touching. Yeah. All Wait, this stuff. Which ones that attract? All of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. I'm like, I'm very sus- susceptible to all of these. Shocked I haven't been... Good thing I don't want you into the woods very often. Yeah, I don't. good thing I don't walk back there too often by myself. I'd be very vulnerable, <laughs> but I forget what we were saying right before that. Yeah, it's just what percentage do you think for La La Trusa? You said it. I just didn't catch it. Seven. Seven. seven? Just seven percent? That was a joke because you said earlier. No. Yeah, but still, it was a joke, but no, just seven. Just some of these could could be. Could be La La Trusa. Anything could be possible. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? That needs to be on it. Paul, if you're listening, that should be on a shirt. With Jay and his big tinfoil hat. Yeah, with a, just make my face look goofy. So this last one isn't really an explanation or a, or a direct category, but it's the screen memory thing. This is the, the it's pro- not real. The projection, yeah. The owl's not real. It's it's uh it's a false memory or a memory placed over top of a memory. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, screen memories do naturally occur in the human mind. Mm-hmm. So we're not talking about anything that's science fiction or anything like that. MK Ultra did work with screen memories and did prove that they could be man placed. It just they, as far as public knowledge goes, never had any great success without detriment to the to the patient. Yeah. Uh, so basically, the whole point of a screen memory was to be able to, for them, was to abduct, let's say, counter spy activities, to abduct a spy, get the information, and then cover up that they were ever abducted, so they could go about their day. Mm-hmm. Like, and so they they would still be quote unquote spying. For their, like they would be spying for their enemy, but they knew the whole time what they were doing. Right, exactly. And then they could feed false information and stuff like that. But the problem is, is the patient was pretty much in shambles. It mentally broke somebody. Yeah. So it never, you know, you couldn't re-release the bee. Uh, they called him like, uh, it's like a, Ju- a Judas's ghost, a goat, a Judas's goat. Mm, interesting. Uh, in Hawaii, what they'll do is they take a goat and they'll tag it and then they'll re-release it. And it'll show them where all the other goats are hiding for, mm. for slaughter. How nefarious. Now they call it a Judas, or a Judas goat. Yeah, it's like the, uh, what is it, the the big wooden horse, Trojan horse. Yeah. Same thing. Man. We're so, conniving so creatures. The screen memories. It could be U.S. government placing this again, or whatever government, world government. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. It could be government. I don't think. It could be a fair I, thing. I've said this a lot. The actual U.S. government, I don't think, knows or does anything. The front office? They don't know. No, I don't even think there's anybody behind. It's people over them. Yeah. It's people that give them, here's a piece of paper. Like uh, The person, the people directing them? Yeah, they don't, like, but the actual U.S. government doesn't know. So it's the people above and behind or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
is it that is it actual aliens you know i don't personally believe aliens are visiting earth as in the true sense of the word right beings uh, from other celestial bodies yes. visiting and now interdimensional sure, downloading whatever. information into our brains and but if they had the technology to get here they we already know this can happen so a refined version could be very easily obtainable mm-hmm. uh and it's just like, is it that, or is it, you know, is it more spiritual? Is it still stuff like Lala Trusa and stuff like that, a more spiritual or faith folk entity that's screwing with your mind on purpose? Or is it interdimensional psychic vampires? You know, you never know. I mean, it literally could be anything. <laughs> Who knows? Anything could be possible. <laughs> and I, ain't that the truth? That needs to be on repeat. It is. I have it. It's a, it's a bottom right button. It's left. Sorry, bottom left button. <laughs> uh, so what are you? What are you giving the screen? Screen image. I'd say percentage. whatever percentage I have left is all going towards this. I don't, I don't think you have anything left. I think you've borrowed twelve percent. I think I'm at twenty nine percent, maybe still left. If my math is right. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? I borrowed? I've already <laughs> borrowed percentages. No, this, but the screen projection, I mean, we know it's possible. It's not a conspiracy theory that this is possible. It's been done. Like, So why can't this be an option for this? It's just the question is why owls? Um, and, you know, I think we both might have the assumption that owls are a living, already existing thing. The grays, I mean, we're assuming most of this is like gray alien stuff. It could be any any entity, I, I suppose, but the owls kind of fit the gray alien mold. So it's a, it's an easy projection to for you to understand, like, oh, you might have seen this, but, yeah, I was just an owl. Like, an owl's an easy one to accept. So it's it's maybe it's just its natural defense mechanism to project that into your thoughts and your mind. It's just weird, like, talking about things projecting images and stuff in your in your own mind that you're seeing personally that it just seems real you know if you think if you see something with your own eyes it's a real thing 100 percent, but it's not always the case and mk ultra the, at least what we know that they've released already proves that so i guess a really simple version of a screen image or a screen memory or whatever a really dumbed down one mm-hmm. without traumatic consequences is would be the duck thing we always talk about oh gotcha yeah is that you're when you look over at a flock of ducks driving home, you're all mallards. Uh, when you're driving on the highway, you see all those ponds that are beside the highway. You drive over, you look, you see a flock of ducks are all mallards, look away. And your brain paints them all as mallards. Your brain has told you these are all the same colored ducks. Mm-hmm. If you really stop and look, you'll see white ones with purple heads. You'll see, you know, you see all these colors that did not exist a second ago. That's a, that's a screen memory. Maybe even a goose. I mean, there's all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it's your brain making things simpler for processing. Your brain is a, basically a computer. Mm-hmm. It does computer things. Right, yeah. And your subconscious is like the... Is a whole different thing. It's like the program, whatever. The, the subconscious is more of a robot than you. Mm-hmm. It you know maintains of just processing data and keeping the body running. Like you consciously don't make your heart beat. That's your subconscious. Now that's, that's nerves and stuff like that. It's the robot program. Breathing is the weird all. one. Still robot. We're all robots. We're biological robots. Living tissue over metal endoskeleton. That's from Terminator. Okay. <laughs> How are you ending with this? What's your final thoughts on owls and aliens? Well, I think they could be actual owls at times. That's, I mean, simple enough. Because like we covered, they're rare occurrences anyway. So when you actually see an owl, and if it's doing some defense posture, it's going to be something new that your mind, you just might not be able to make sense of. Um, but I do think it's like demons doing psychic projections on you in, in owl form. So before we go, I'll tell you my owl story. Oh, yeah. So we have the we have two chimneys on this house that don't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. There's, they're, not, they're not real chimneys anymore. Well, the one would fill up with bats and bats and bats. It was super bad one year. It was so many bats. Uh, so I parked around back. I was coming home. It's late midsummer, and we started having small groups of screech owls that were sitting in the tree waiting for the bats to come out to catch the bats. Mm, okay. Uh, so we'd already seen them dozens of times. You know, like three or four of them at a time, whatever. 
Uh, anybody don't know, a screech owl is like the size of like a Nerf football, like a small Nerf football. Okay. Uh, so a big one's like a pound, maybe, if I had to guess. I don't know off the top of my head, but they're very small owls. Uh, and they do kind of live in colonies. Uh, so I get, I park, it's like 10 30 at night. So it's just, it's late summer though. So it's just getting to that point where the bats are about to start coming out. I start walking this tree in the alley and I look up and it comes where they would always sit. And I see like there's four or five screech owls waiting. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I look and there's 15 and I look and there's 50 and I look and there's like two or 300 screech owls. <laughs> Every spot in this tree is full of screech owls. There wasn't a, it, it, you couldn't see it until you were looking for them. Yeah. Uh, cause little brown lumps. Uh huh. Literally every spot in the tree had a screech owl. And then, out of like in synchronicity, they turn and all look at me and then I'll go <laughs> and start hissing and rattling at me. Hundreds of them. I take off into the house. I'm like, I don't, I'm not scared of a screech owl. Yeah. It's like piranha. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not scared of a piranha. And then they were all flying over the yard, stuff like that. Every post in the backyard had owls on it. When did this happen? This was uh, 18, 2018. Okay. And they ate all the bats like that night, and we never seen them again. Yeah. Oh, that's insane. So all the owls in the whole town probably. They got word finally yeah. that this is, this is the spot, but boys. literally, mom has a picture of every... It looked like uh, ornaments in the yard because every p- post in the backyard fence had an owl on top of it. That's insane, but awesome at the same time. <laughs> but they scared the hell out of me because I thought they were coming to get me. Yeah. I would have waited in the... Like, jumped in the car and waited and watched the show. I wasn't near any of them. We've seen the owls hunting bats every night. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't the odd thing. Oh, okay, okay. It was just the, the fact that there were two under them sitting and in the probably, street. I've seen so many screech owls in town. Yeah. Screech owls are like, and then there's like burrowing owls out, in, uh, owls out in Texas and stuff like that. You think they're groundhog holes and there's actually owls living in these really? colonies underground. Owls are kind of freaky. Owls are cool. Yeah. I have been the great and powerful mystery. And I have been Jay, clone number 30 something. We've hoped you enjoyed this extra long a- episode of Curses of the Corn. Remember, leave a five star review, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Please share with a friend you think would like us. It's the best way to help our show grow. Leave a comment, rate us, a five star review. And remember, there is always extra content on Patreon slash Cryptos of the Corn.com. And don't forget, stay magical.